Good morning, everybody. Another early morning pour. We're actually using front dumps today. I know a lot of you guys see me use rear dumps, but we're, I don't know, we're about an hour away from the shot. And we're using a little bit different concrete company today. And a lot of their trucks are front dumps. So you're going to get to see us using a front dump today. We'll get going. I told him to mix up to about a six. This is a 32 by 32 garage. Just flat. It's going to just be a workshop. So we'll get the concrete poured in here and then we'll get it power trialed, get it sawed, and that'll be it for today. We're going to get going here in a minute. Hey guys, so for some of you, you know, using a front dump is probably standard every single day. You guys get front dumps. For us, the two companies we use the most are rear dumps. So that's basically what we're used to. So when we get we get a little bit away from our area, some of the other companies in Maine do have these front dumps. So I don't mean it's for us it's kind of a treat I guess as long as you get a good driver because there's a little bit of a trick knowing like how much concrete to dump and how fast to dump it so you guys don't have to work extra hard pulling the concrete around so for a four inch thick concrete floor like this you know you don't want to pile it up too high and then you don't want to leave it low either you want to get it somewhat close so all the guys really need to do is just rake it around like Luke and Eric are doing right there. So if you do get a good driver, like like this guy's a good driver, that knows what he's doing and you know does it every day, using a front dump like this can make your job quite a bit easier. On a rear dump right now, like I would be holding the chute and moving the chute back and forth and telling the driver, you know, either to pull ahead or back up, whatever, whatever I needed to do. So it does allow one extra guy you know to do something else like I, i'm mag floating these edges and getting all that in and then it also allows like right now you know without having a, a guy having to run the shoe eric can be over there just kind of tuning in the concrete Vert and i'm over here now raking the concrete for luke and darren where i would usually be holding the shoot right now and these guys would be screeding by themselves without a raker so that's another big bonus of having a, a front dump with a guy that knows what he's doing. Now, if you guys are new to my channel, we pour concrete just about every day. All floors, all flat work, stamp concrete, patios, pool decks, stuff like that. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, please go down there and hit subscribe now. We come out with, I come out with a couple videos a week about doing all kinds of different things. Talking about how to pour concrete, how to finish it, uh, how to repair it, and all kinds of things like that. This is how we screed, this is kick screeding. So we'll kick our footprints in as we screed so we don't have to stop. And that was what we call a bay right there. A bay is basically the, you know, whatever the size of the screed is. We're using a 14 foot screed today. A lot of times we'll use a, a vibrating screed, a powered vibrating screed. Um, the guys just, on something this small, they just decide to pull out the hand screed. And you can see for us, kick screeding like that is pretty easy and then you can watch Luke right here pull the bull float over it and that just shows you right there just how nice and flat that is when he's pulling that bull float over it there's no humps or dips or anything like that and again here's us kicking as we screed and the only reason the guys need to kick is just to fill in their boot prints the raker pretty much does everything else and we're just watching the ends How's Darren? Right, Darren's in the gray. He's just watching his end to make sure he's what we call scoring. So he's leaving a tiny little bit of a line as he's screeding on the previously screeded surface. Eric's doing the same thing on that outside edge where I'm mag floating. And that, for us, that gets the concrete perfectly level. The guy didn't want any slope in this one today, so this garage floor is just level. Going to use it as a, more of a workshop than he is a garage. So he's never really going to get any water in here. And then, you know, we run the bull float right over it. Gets it nice and smooth. And that's that prepares the surface for power troweling a little bit later. So, again, using a front dump for us, it's pretty rare. We, you know, we'll, we'll pour anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half away from the shop. It's pretty normal for us as far as travel goes and closer 
but the two that are closest to us we, we have we use basically two concrete companies the ones that are closest to us they have all rear dumps for one one concrete plant they have probably six or seven different plants around the state and all right got that first one dumped pretty quick get this second one done Another really good thing about these front dumps is they're all-wheel drive, so they can go some places that the rear dumps can't, in my opinion. The rear dumps that we use, boy, you get them on anything soft or anything that's uh, a little wet or slimy and it's not gravel, those things just basically spin. So that's another really good point and uh, bonus of using these front dumps. They just, they can go a lot of different places. Plus they have that extra chute too, so they can reach a little bit further than the rear dumps can. A lot of times, like I'm over there magging that edge on the left. We have that little six or eight foot chute extension that we have to put on a lot of jobs. So if we had used a rear dump on this job, we would have had to use that little chute extension versus these front dumps here. We don't have to. Now we're taking a chute off him because he's getting ready to back into those trusses back there. So rather than just reposition him, we'll just... Darren just decided to flip the chute off him and so we could just keep going. We, when we shoot grades on something like this, we use a laser. So we'll, we'll shoot our grades and I'll you know mark them with a pencil in the corners and in the middle. And then we'll snap a chalk line on the wall. And that's the grade we use to mag float like I was doing. And then we'll use a laser to do a wet pad in the middle. And that's what we use to screed off from for our middle pad. And that keeps, you know, that gives us something to go by as we as we screed the floor. And then we'll use, you know, whatever length screed that we need. We have multiple lengths from 4 feet to four, 14 feet. And again, this is how we screed. And you can see as we screed, you can kind of see how Darren's scoring right there on the left. He's leaving a little tiny score mark that doesn't really dig into the surface. And when he does score, that tells him that he's not leaving the concrete high either. And we pull what we call just kind of short strokes, like six to eight inch strokes. That's just allows, it's kind of a rhythm that we have. So it allows us to both stay in the same rhythm as we're screeding together. Rather than pull these big long strokes. Um, might as well just let the raker do the work as far as pulling and pushing the concrete and just let's let us kind of screed it flat there's a lot of different ways to screed guys do it differently some guys will just screed like this by themselves and we could do that um, and sometimes we sometimes we do rarely but the smaller the screed the shorter the screed like eight foot seven foot six foot we'll just screed by ourselves but the longer ones we found it's just you know a lot less back breaking if we screed with two guys on it like this especially where we screed floors every day I mean it's not like we're doing this once or twice a week it's every single day sometimes sometimes two of them a day so that over the course of a season that kind of wears on you and it just makes it easier when at least we feel it makes it easier when there's two guys on here I don't know what it, about what you guys feel about it but let me know what you think does it look easier with two guys doing this, or do you think one guy in the middle would be easier doing this? So we're getting down to the end where we uh, we don't fill this up completely, like we don't want to have to shovel out much, if any. So we'll get down to the very end, we'll leave it just a little bit low, and then if we need a little bit more, we'll just pour a little bit more out of the truck here right at the end. The guy, you know, the guy's not in that much of a hurry where he's just got to dump it and leave you a big pile in there. At least not with us. They're pretty good with us. I don't know about where you guys are at, but um, these guys are never, the concrete drivers around here never try to hurry us. Probably because they don't really have to. We pour pretty, pretty fast anyway, but they shouldn't have to hurry you. You do have a time limit, though. There's usually seven or eight minutes per yard you're allowed, so... 
if you start going way over that, then you know they might try to hurry you a little bit or charge you extra. You can see I'm over there on the left running that bow float. And I can tell that's really flat because both the ends of the bow float are touching. They leave a little bit of mark. And then there's no dips or anything under the middle of the bow float. If there was a hump in there, then one of the ends or both of the ends wouldn't touch and leave a little bit of a line. And you can see how nice and flat that is under that bow float. When we can, we try to we try to bow float, you know, opposite of the way that we screed too. That's generally the way you do it. What we found is, you know, because we can bow float the concrete really flat, we could go either way, and it doesn't really matter. You you'd be able to tell when you power trial if there was some big humps in here. It would it would really show, and we just don't find that. So Eric's over there just mag floating what I couldn't reach with the bow float, and then I'm gonna finish this off with the bow float going this way. So we, I mean, we do really like. Uh, front dumps, we'd use them every day if we had them, but we don't. Oh, yeah, that's it. 32-32 garage using front dumps today. Let me know. What do you guys think? Front dumps easier to use than rear dumps? <laughs> I mean, for us, it doesn't really matter for us. We're so used to using the rear dumps that we just think those are easy. One thing is, is we didn't have to use our little chute today because these things got pretty good reach. It actually, it actually seems like they got one more chute extension than some of the rear dumps have so maybe in that way they're a lot easier to use too but with a good driver somebody that knows what they're doing these trucks are definitely easy to use thanks for watching guys see you on the next one